Welcome to Honda Out of Flash Pro Training Part 32. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at doing the fuel calibration process for our 10th gen Civic applications. Now, our 10th gen Civics are going to be quite different than our other applications that we've talked about and covered in our Flash Pro training course. These are going to be direct injection and going to be turbocharged, so we're going to be introducing a lot of new concepts that are specific to our new platform for the Civics. So we're going to be breaking down, looking in this video at data logs and an Excel spreadsheet calculator specific to our 10th gens that's going to help us in calibrating our math curve or doing the calibration process in general. We're going to be looking at our data logs, learning how to do idle and part throttle tuning, and then looking at our wide open throttle data logs, looking at what to spot within our fuel information, looking at our commanded air fuel, looking at our actual air fuel, looking at our math voltage or math hertz, and learning how to make the calibration changes so that we can recalibrate the math curve to deliver the proper amount of fuel. There's a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video here so we can check everything out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our 10th gen Civic applications using Honda Out of Flash Pro. Up to this point in the training course, we've went through all the other vehicle types that Honda has to offer in the older applications. So 8th gen Civics, 9th gen Civics, S2000, RDX, and the V6 J series Accords. Um, we'll find that everything there is pretty straightforward. There's not really any deviations or major deviations in the programming between those. However, now when we're talking about our generation change here to the 10th gen Civics, we'll find that the programming here is completely different. Anything that you've learned in the previous training videos here in our training course is not gonna be applicable. We're gonna find that we have to learn essentially a new set of programming language here within the 10th gen applications. Now we're gonna be looking at the base model and Civic SI for the 10th gen here in the first few videos. We will be introducing and having a specific video on the FK8. The programming within that ECU is a bit different, so we need to have a separate video on those uh, applications and, uh, and just making sure that we don't cross mix because what we learn here isn't necessarily gonna be applicable to a FK8 application for a 10th gen Civic. So the very first thing I wanna talk about here is the differences or the biggest differences between the programming when we're talking about uh, going from an 8th and 9th gen application to a 10th gen. And that's going to be, we have a turbocharged engine to deal with. So that's one of the largest differences here. Now on this turbo application, we'll find that Honda has went in and modeled the engine in a torque-based modeling. So that idea may be unfamiliar. So let's talk about that. Well, we're going to find that the 10th gen Civics have a mass airflow sensor. The mass airflow sensor can tell the ECU how much airflow is being ingested into the engine. We found that we had a mass airflow sensor on the 8th and 9th gen Civics and that we usually would convert those right over to speed density and eliminate the mass airflow sensor or the, the need to tune with the mass airflow sensor. We'll find that those applications, the engine ran really, really well without the mass airflow sensor, especially when we're doing radical modifications. Now when we're talking about the 10th gen Civics, they're going to have a mass airflow sensor, but we don't have a way to convert them over to speed density. We're going to be running them purely mass airflow based, although they do have, the 10th gens do have a MAP sensor to register what kind of boost pressure the engine is going to be seeing. Now while we can measure what the airflow is coming into the engine, we can see that right here we have our airflow meter voltage or the airflow meter grams per second. Airflow meter voltage is the raw signal that's coming in and then it's going to be translating that voltage to a grams per second registration of airflow. If it knows the airflow, then it can figure out how to deliver the fuel to the engine and the spark to the engine. We'll talk about that as we go on here in this video, specifically the fuel. We're going to look at fuel tuning in this video, the spark timing in the next video. But if we know what the amount of airflow is coming into the engine and we know what the spark timing is going to be at, if we're at or near maximum brake torque, then we can uh, have a very, very good calculation of what the engine torque production is going to be without even putting the engine on a dyno. We'll find that most new cars are going to be torque model. So they're going to be having a large set of background mathematical calculations going on at any given time and figuring out what the torque production is out of the engine. Now we'll find on the 10th gens, they do have a torque limiter. So if we're dealing with something like a CVT transmission, we can't run a lot of torque or a lot of boost pressure that could damage the transmission. So we'll find in those applications, Honda has implemented a torque limiter so that the transmissions don't have too much torque and get damaged. Now, we'll find that the Honda maps have exposed the torque limitation. We can actually raise that and get that out of the way so that's no longer a factor. Now, if we're dealing with a torque limit and we have a torque limit in place, that means that we don't want to allow the engine to have a, a make pass a certain amount of torque. We can go and limit the engine's torque in a couple different ways. And we'll find that the ECU can use any or all of these ways that it sees fit within the OEM programming routine 
to be able to achieve the torque level that we're requesting or we're limiting at. We'll find that if we have our throttle plate, because we're drive by wire, we have our throttle plate opening. If our throttle plates open all the way, we'll find that it's going to be flowing the maximum amount of airflow. If we start to close our throttle plate, that's going to be shutting off the airflow that we're ingesting into the engine. By reducing the amount of airflow, we can start to reduce the amount of torque production out of the engine. And what we're going to find is that the airflow registration is tied in to our throttle plate movement. Now we do have our pedal position, that's what we put our foot on in the car to actually try to open up the electric throttle plate that's mounted onto the engine. The plate and the pedal here are going to be different, they're not going to necessarily be the exact same. We'll find that most times they're not at the lower throttle angles. Now we'll find in this situation with a torque based modeling or airflow modeling that we'll find in the tension applications that if we do have a torque limiter in place, it will restrict what that plate's going to be even if our pedal is at 100% throttle because if again we start to reduce the throttle plate opening, we reduce the amount of airflow coming into the engine, it can very accurately track the amount of airflow ingestion into the engine or torque production versus the plate movement. That's already been modeled into the OEM routine, so that's going to be a really nice way to go about uh, doing torque modeling. Now, it has several other ways that we can limit torque. One way is going to be another way is going to be uh, reducing the spark timing. As we have less and less spark timing that's being um, delivered to the engine, we'll find that the cylinder pressure is going to naturally reduce. By reducing the cylinder pressure, <clears throat> we're going to find that it's going to uh, drop torque, drop power production. We're also going to find, uh, because it's turbocharged, we can reduce the amount of boost pressure. So by reducing the amount of boost pressure, we'll reduce the amount of torque. So it has the ability to reduce torque in three different manners. It can either do it based on our throttle plate movement, closing the throttle, it can go in and reduce the timing, pull that torque back, or it can reduce the amount of boost pressure the engine seeing and also reduce the torque. And again, it can do any or all of them how it sees fit. And we don't have control over that, but just be aware that it, it can go in and ma manipulate that. Now, we'll find- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later